All right, man, peace. You know, I got so many requests from brothers for me to talk about this uh, this interview between uh, Christine Leahy and LeVar Ball and as well as Colin Cowherd because allegedly it was controversial. I don't see how it was controversial. All it was was a man standing up for himself. And as usual, when you stand up to most of these bully mega feminists, these feminazis, they have to try to turn it into a rape case or a pseudo rape case, which is what she tried to do. But let's watch the interview in context and let's see what, what, what transpires. Well, he was a personal trainer, a former pro athlete, played in the Pac-12, and he has Big Ballers Training, which has become Big Ballers Brand, which is a shoe which we have on display here in the illuminated case. And last night, his dreams and Lonzo Ball's dreams came true. A man I have supported and gotten a lot of pushback, not only around here, but all over social media. Let's bring on LeVar Ball. All right, LeVar. Walking with a great deal of confidence this morning. I know you don't watch all these shows, but I will uh, uh, say... Oh, no, LeVar be watching. LeVar. <laughs> LeVar's like an owl. He see every damn thing. ...say that I have mostly supported you in your endeavors. I have. And because I believe that if you can get your son's uh, scholarships to UCLA, that's probably more than I'm going to accomplish, so that's a, a remarkable thing. Now you see what the so-called you see what the so-called white man Colin Cowherd said. Now, <laughs> now you you contrast that with what a lot of hating ass uh, so-called black people say about Lavar Ball. And look, uh, I understand why some people might find him distasteful. I'm not I I'm not offended or threatened by him at all because I I don't you know I don't get caught up in other human beings. No, I define myself, so I don't worry about how another person chooses to express themselves. That's their business. I think a lot of times when people get overly offended by how people express themselves, especially so-called black men who exhibit strong personality traits, the reason why they get so offended is because normally it's due to the fact that they have weak personality traits. And also, a lot of so-called black men don't, don't have a, uh, a ruling class mentality. So they don't understand somebody. They can't comprehend somebody who has a ruling class mentality. Like I touched on with, Le with the LeVar Ball thing a long time ago. He doesn't care about if this shoe line or this clothing line pops off or not. He, has, he feels like he has nothing to lose. He doesn't care. All right. So these people, they can't comprehend why he didn't take the $10 million from Nike or whoever he got offers from. They can't comprehend that because their whole life is, is, uh, is predicated on being accepted and being used as a tool by the major corporations he doesn't give a shit all right that's obvious and when you don't give a shit it makes you liberated but let's see how this uh interview transpires do you feel vindicated this morning all the criticism helicopter dad you feel vindicated this morning i don't care about none of that that's just how they feel on the outside you see when you don't when you don't care that's one of the most powerful Phrases that you can use, those three words, I don't care. I'm always going to be winning and grinning. So whatever people say on the outside, as long as it don't stop me from doing what I'm doing, which is you guys get to look on the outside like, dang, he's, he's true about all this stuff. But I already know what's going to happen because I planned it just like this. And see, they don't like a so-called black man speaking like that. You're not supposed to plan anything. You're not Because remember, that's why a lot of these simple-minded Negroes, these weedhead Negroes, you know, whenever your brain works at a higher level, they claim that it's a conspiracy theory. Because what does conspiring uh, pertain to? Conspiring pertains to actually having a plan, which a lot of low-level people don't have. All right. He clearly had a plan. He had a plan for, for his sons from the outset. He even stated that he chose the woman that he chose because she was tall and athletic. So he already knew, he already knew what he had planned for his sons. Right, whether that makes him a helicopter dad or controlling, that's that's up to your perspective and your opinion. But his plan has worked out. All right, just to get one son into the NBA is a phenomenal accomplishment. He most likely is going to get three into the NBA, if for no other reason, other you no know, notoriety. You said Lonzo will only work out for the Lakers. And isn't it amazing how much credit people like Kevin Durant's mother get? And uh, LeBron James' mother and all these other uh, females who didn't put a basketball in their son's hand. They never taught him how to dribble, shoot, pass, play defense. They didn't do any of that shit. Don't get me wrong. Uh, in the case of Kevin Durant's mother, I'm sure that she was there and 
You know, she did a, a, a good job in raising him to the best of her ability. A LeBron James mom, I'm sure she did the best job that she could when she wasn't uh, juggling penises and, and uh, scrotums and snorting cocaine and breaking into people's house, right? allegedly. But um, isn't it amazing that they get all that credit, right? Mother's Day is basically like a, a, like a, a, a holy day in America. But when you have guys like LeVar Ball and Serena Williams' father, uh, Richard Williams, you barely hear about them. Right? And they're supposed to be the worst guys ever, right? Floyd Mayweather's dad, how they get demonized, especially when it's a, a so-called black male father figure. Ain't that a bitch? Lakers, why not just spread the joy and the talent around us multiple teams? Uh, on the fact that he's only going to the Lakers, so why should we work out for 40 different teams? Or two or three different teams? It's just the same way we did with uh, Lonzo going to UCLA. I didn't go on all these recruiting trips and say wine and dine us and act like you want us. We know what we wanted, which was UCLA. We know we want the Lakers, so why are we working out for any other teams? What if Boston says we think he's the only generational player in this draft? We're picking him. Yeah, you got a great opinion. That's good. I'm saying it's lined up for him to go to the Lakers. But what if they do that? What if they, they're giving you a compliment? What if Danny Ainge... If they gave me a compliment, that's fine. Here, here's the thing. I prefer Zoe. See, this guy, LeVar Ball, is so single-minded. And like I stated in the past, people do not like, and I spoke to, I mentioned this in regards to a, a certain brother. I think in one of my, um, my responding to your comments videos. You know, when you have a vision and a plan for yourself, you can't let people take it from you. You know, the, remember in training day, there was a scene with uh, Denzel and Ethan Hawke, and they were there. And, uh... <laughs> Ethan Hawke stated that you have to protect your smiles and your cries because that's all you have. A lot of times people, they, people want to know what's valuable, what you hold valuable and what you hold dear so that they can try to tear it down because their life is a failure. You have to be careful what you reveal to people and what you, you know, and what your dreams and what your aspirations are. Because most people, the only satisfaction that they get out of life is trying to bring you down into the depths that they dwell in. All right. Life is like mathematics. Uh, a negative and a positive make a neutral. So if you're a positive person, you can't hang out with, with a negative person because they're going to make your life neutral, meaning it's going to go nowhere. Right? Negative and a negative make positive. That's why you always you notice a lot of times people who just like to talk shit and provoke other people and start shit, they like to hang out with each other because it's two negatives. They make a positive. All right? So if you, if you are a so-called positive person, you have a focus and you have a vision, you most likely will be better off being a loner until you can uh, succeed in whatever your endeavor is. All right. Most people are here on the earth and they have no reason why they have they have no idea why they're here, which means they have no reason to be here. So they spend their life trying to cause mischief in other people's life. You have to watch out and be vigilant for those people. All right. To go to the Lakers. But if Boston were to choose him. And Lonzo wants to play basketball. Guess what? He don't care where he goes. Do you believe your feelers out there that Boston would take him number one? Boston's not going to take him. Why? On the fact that they have Isaiah. See, if, if Lonzo goes to Boston, he turns into a two. They tried that at UCLA. When Aaron Holiday comes in the game, yeah. he can't play the two. He has to play the one because he's small. But you see how the game went. And that's, that's the same thing that would happen. Lonzo's always going to be a point guard. He could play any position, but his true position is point guard. And Colin already knows that what LeVar's saying is correct. He knows Boston's not going to take him. He's just asking that question because he has to, to play devil's advocate. Guard. And Boston has so many guards. I mean, you don't need that guy. What if um, the Lakers reportedly want to work out De'Aaron Fox and Lonzo head-to-head? -head? They played in college. De'Aaron had the better of him that afternoon at least in the tournament. Okay. What if Magic says, I want to work them out together? Go ahead. You ain't scared of nobody. You want to work them out one-on-one, -on -one, then you're going to see what really goes on. I hope the reporters and all the news is in there. Darren Fox had one game or, or 39 points. Who else did he do that? You're going to justify his whole career on one game against Lonzo. And like I said, Lonzo's not a one-on-one -on -one guy. Yeah. I tell you what that Lonzo did. He beat every team he played. He did beat Kentucky. He did. He beat Kentucky. He beat USC. Everybody that beat him, he beat them. Um, I said this yesterday that uh, it's such a unique. Uh, I think Lonzo's really talented. It, it, I think uh, Markel Fultz is probably tomorrow physically ready to come in the league and score. 
Uh, but I don't think anybody in this, I think the only player, and I said this about Ben Simmons last year, uh -huh. Ben Simmons is the only player. Doesn't mean he'll be the best, but he was the only player in last year's draft, I said. He could change a lot of things. Um, I, I think Lonzo's the only player in this draft. He may not even be the best, but he could change a lot of things in the league. The relevance of the Lakers, marketing in Los Angeles, shoe sales, summer league in Vegas. He's going to be a transformative player, whether he's the best or not. Are you concerned that Lonzo is not a guy in a personal workout that may blow teams away? And he's probably not. I mean, Lonzo Ball doesn't come off to me as a as an explosive one on one player. But um, there's been plenty of cases of guys who have been transformative figures when they join a team who wasn't who were not like that. You know, whether it be a Jason Kidd or you know, a Magic Johnson, even though Magic, as we know, is one of the top five players to ever play. But you know, every, you know, everything now in the NBA, everybody wants to run a pick and roll and cross everybody over. And, but you know, you never know. This guy, uh, at the end of the day, the proof is in the pudding. The man joined UCLA and made them a, you know, a tournament team and and uh, probably the most, uh, the most watched team in the country. He's not. He'll make people better. He's not gonna. Not a forty-two inch vertical. Not Whoa! A, wait a minute. He is. He's forty something. That man ain't got no forty something inch vertical of all. Stop bullshitting, man. Ain't no forty two. He a little above that. One on one, they might not let him out the building because they'd be so intrigued on all the stuff he can do. That sounds like a lot of hype, though, kind of. Yeah. Hype my ass. That boy can play. <laughs> <laughs> sound like a sound like a dude in the barber shop. Hype my ass. Boy, have a fifty seven inch vertical. And you get anybody who trains though, or. They don't want to put him down. He's like a fresh tool. They're just like, man, I can show him so much. And they just open that book. You sharpen his old tools. He's that guy. Even when it comes to working out and playing. Just like Lonzo got drafted. You're supposed to have a big party at the house. And everybody's supposed to go to the club and say, hey, man. Hey, you getting drafted. We finna get this money. Lonzo went to the club last night after he found out the balls was in his way. 24-hour fitness club. Yes, with his brothers to work out and play. I didn't even notice till somebody showed me. Lonzo ain't played since he's been at UCLA. He hungry right now. And he's wound up tight. And he ended up playing. I told him, I don't need you playing. I don't need you springing no ankle or nothing. But behind my back, he out there playing with his brothers and doing his thing. Have you spoken to the Lakers or Magic? I haven't spoken to anybody. Let's get into the shoes. Um, I. So now this is going to be the avenue for the... Uh, the Caucasian temptress, <laughs> Christine Leahy, to uh, try to inject her perspective, that her feminazi perspective, and this is where it's all going to go downhill. Notice how they were vibing. Why is that? Because they have a similar, they have similar perspective. They both have a uh, ruling class mentality. You know, I won't say alpha male per se, but you know, you can say that. And they vibe because they they understand each other very well. They both self made. Now watch what happens when the uh, you know, the feminazi jumps in. Remember, the feminazi is filled, is galvanized by entitlement and unaccountability. I can say what I want about whoever I want, and they can't say it back. If not, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, bring in some type of, of, of diversionary tactic, a red herring, to steer the conversation away from what it's actually about and make myself the victim. That's feminazi 101. I thought your price point was a little high. How about we make a deal? Why don't you just drop it to about three fifty? How about you create your own shoe and you drop it to three fifty and see how many people buy it? <laughs> Let's take it. You see what Lavar said? He said, "Why don't you drop the shoe to three fifty and see how many people buy it?" In other words, like I said, he priced it that high because it was psychological pricing. All right? He priced it that high for it to be exclusive on purpose. All right? So that you know he could utilize a. A, uh, a certain tactic in retail and in advertisement and basically get startup money for when Lonzo uh, goes to the Lakers and becomes a big star. Let's take a listen. First of all, I, I said this on the air. I said, um, you know, it's easy to pop off, but I used to think there'd never be a $10 million home. And now there's $70 million homes. I never thought I'd pay five bucks for a cup of coffee. Right. So, yes, Colin, it's called uh, it's called inflation, man. So what happens when you have no gold back in the money? But that's a whole other topic. So $300, $400 shoes may sound outrageous, but my argument is if Lonzo kills it in the summer league, 
Uh -huh. If he's two games in with 13 assists both nights and he's fun and flashy, we're going to go. That's all it costs. Have you sold any shoes yet? Yeah, I, I've sold a, a good amount to me. The reason why they're asking him that question, they keep asking him how many shoes he's sold in an attempt to embarrass him. It's like anybody who has tried to start their own business and after two weeks they're asking him, so how much revenue have you brought in? Like, why would you ask that? Now, Colin is, Colin is not asking from a, a, uh, an embarrassment perspective or in an attempt to denigrate him. He's asking because he has to as a so-called journalist, right? He has to. But Colin, Colin has enough common sense to know that as it, you know, in a startup business like the, like the uh, big baller brand is, it's not going to take off right away. Colin has spoken in the past about how long it took Amazon to, uh, to jump off. He understands what's going on, but he has to ask that question. But it's going to give Christine Leahy the avenue that she needs to be an idiot. Like I said, there's different amounts. How many? You see? You see what she said? How many? All right. Now, why, now why didn't she wait for Colin to say that? Because she was trying to put him in a position to emasculate him. She does not like that he's a, quote-unquote, alpha male with... A ruling class mentality, particularly a, a alpha black male, like I stated in the past, so-called black male. Like I've stated in the past, she's dating a a so-called black man. All right. But I, like I've stated in the past, she has mental issues. I noted that. All right. I specifically noted that in the past on one of the previous videos. I can't remember which one. Why I stated that she is a feminist with mental problems. Stay in your lane. <laughs> <laughs> now she said how many LeVar didn't even look at her He said stay in your lane Now anybody who is You know so called black knows that that term Stay in your lane is not a term that's used For people necessarily because of their gender It's used for people who coming out of pocket Right who's not minding their business And we could peep from the jump That you're here to start some shit Wait, 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 you see now he said um and he's showing you why he's upset with her he's referring to when she said when she was sat on the colin cowherd show and said that lonzo ball looks like he's scared of his dad because he barely talks when lavar is talking all right the, lonzo obviously knows what his dad is doing his dad is is, is talking him up. That's what a promoter does. All right? But people are used to the convention of a black male athlete comes from a no-father home, a single-parent home led by a mother who really doesn't know up from down, uh, has transcendent talent, uh, goes to a college and makes a college tens of millions of dollars every year. From there, he gets forwarded from the control of the college coach to a, a major... Uh, a major agent, professional sports agent, where he gets control there and he gets his money siphoned there. He gets signed to the uh, endorsement deals. And if he fails, he fails. If he doesn't, he doesn't. But, every, but nothing is really in his control other than what happens on the court. What LeVar Ball is attempting to do is to change that paradigm. And people are very, very uncomfortable about that. I'm going to rewind it a little bit. I saw right now. She said she scared Lonzo. Lonzo scared of me. She scared me. That's why I don't look that way. I don't look over there because well, she scares me. I'm no, thinking I, of Saul right now. I'm just. <laughs> he said he's. He said I'm thinking of Saul right now. I'm just trying. I'm. Leave I'm, me alone. Uh, uh, I'll tell you four, five hundred oh. pair. So she's a reporter. Her job is to. Play. She can report to whoever she want behind her. What's, I'm I, talking what is, to you, Colin. Well, what's your what is your problem with me? Hey, my problem is you are a hater. Why I would hate never her? wear a big baller shirt. But no, good, I didn't don't say even that. talk to Yes, you did say that. You said that you would never wear a big baller brand uh, uh, apparel. You you did say that. I, talk to me, but I heard you say it. I'm not even worried about it. I said that I wouldn't wear something that. It as says a woman. big baller. It's the same thing. Yeah. With I mean, all due respect, I, you're a great reporter, just not reporting on me. And she's not a great reporter. All she is is eye candy. She has a weave and a damn head. And uh, she got the body of a 45 year old woman. You see her arms, she got pterodactyl arms. All right. But she's probably so used to simple minded black men puffing her head up with how good she looked. All right. And she's been with this so-called that simp black man for years. And, you know, a lot of times and I touch on this with the Molly Karam thing on ESPN. A lot of times when, when females of other races date so-called black men, they, they feel like they have an avenue to speak with authority 
at black males, at so-called black males, or about so-called black issues. All right? And they get very, very comfortable because so-called blacks are so liberal, they just love welcoming in everyone. Because, once again, because uh, so-called blacks have no culture, they're very welcoming of people of other races, so-called races. All right? So... When, you, when a so-called black man who has a, a, an authoritative personality puts that barrier up, they don't know how to act. They don't know how to respond. It's like, oh, wow, I actually got rejected by a Negro, right? So they totally lose all composure, and you're going to see her do that in this, uh, in this segment. I have a right to say what you shirt I would and wouldn't wear. Uh-oh, welcome to Big Baller Zone. Well, now you see what she said? She said, she said, I have a right to state what I would and wouldn't wear, and sure, and he has the right to be offended. The same way that he has a right to say, I choose not to speak to you. Well, no, no I think I, I actually Bala was, was saying it as like a point. No, I didn't say no, 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 no. I didn't oh, say it was offensive. I didn't say it was offensive. Yeah. I just said, you know, if you want to, you know, work with Nike, Adidas and Under Armour to maybe have something that appeals to women. Oh. If he wanted to work with Nike, Adidas or Under Armour, then he would have accepted their offer. Hello. See, idiots like her, she's trying to pr she's trying to create this this uh, scenario where LeVar Ball went to these quote unquote major sports apparel companies and he was like, I'll take any deal you offer. And they said, no, we don't want you because of your mouth. That's not what happened. He said he wanted a billion dollars for his own imprint, you know, under their umbrella. And they said no, which is their right. So he decided to branch out on his own. That happens all the time. You have a show about it called Shark Tank, right, which is about entrepreneur entrepreneurs across the country starting to start trying to start their own companies. And they just need startup money. Right? That's all. But she has no she has no uh, comprehension of that because, you know, all that bleach in a scalp. I thought that was a legit. I mean, I don't have okay. to agree, but She's I thought that was a pretty good point. With her. I don't agree. But I thought it was a good. No, point. I'm, I'm actually saying it as like a point of advice. I'm not friends with her. I don't. I don't. I don't even see that. I don't even see it. I I wasn't saying it as like I I would never wear this. What's this show I about? Think... Yes, you were. You said that you, uh, that you would never wear anything. You said women would never wear anything that had big baller brand on it. Yes, you did. So you're lying. I about think... again? Let me talk about shoes. I don't want to talk about all that. Next. Well, well, I, I think in order to have a successful company, you're going to have to have women who like your brand. Uh, no, that's not true at all. That's nonsense. Especially when you have a startup company, the main, the, the main demographic that you want to cater to is the so-called young black male. Because the young black male is who determines what's popular across the globe. Not even the country, but, but across the globe. All right? If you go to Beijing, China today, the Chinese are over there dressing like, the, like how they see the young black male dress in in the so-called inner city, all right? The so-called young black male establishes whatever is popular culturally-wise across the planet Earth, whether it be music or attire or what have you, all right? Even in his ignorance. Uh, yeah, if you have a woman's company. But anyways. Oh, see. <laughs> now, she got offended by that because he said, if you have a woman's company, but that's, that's just how it goes. Right. You have many, many apparel companies that cater towards men. Right. Especially here in America. Most most females have such low self-esteem. What do most women do? They like to dress like men. Right. The reason why Michael Jordan started a female line is because you had all these little hood rats out here wearing Jordans. They don't even play basketball. But why are they wearing Air Jordans or Timberlands for? Because they want to emulate men, which is really all the feminist movement is about is trying to be a man. All right, so LeVar Ball understands you don't come out with a female line right away for what? Right? For, you know, you want to get a foothold amongst the young black males. Once the young black male wears it, then it's going to trickle down to all the other races. Right? You, you got to worry about step one before you get before you worry about step five. But she's trying to feel important by trying to push her feminist bullshit. That's why she's going she's gonna to be the Caucasian version of Jamel Hill. 30 something years old, 40 something years old, not married. So we're you're not about, marketing to We're women. talking about big baller brand. Okay, so let me let me go into this, though. Thank you. Well, and notice he's constantly trying to avoid confrontation while she's constantly trying to encourage it, but allegedly he's the one who threatened her. Well, I'm not... Don't thank me for it. I'm well, just, I have to thank you. This is it. all very good. Yes. Uh, it's all interesting to me, and I think some people say, and I don't believe this because I think Tiger Woods... She probably wanted to call him a nigger. And, and, and hey, she's probably turned on right now was in Sports Illustrated at 14. So I don't, I in a weird way think the pressure you put on your son is actually 
what Oscar De La Hoya's dad put on Oscar, what Andre Agassi's dad, what Serena Williams' dad. I'm kind of... Exactly, what Floyd Mayweather's dad. See, Colin gets it. ...kind of into what you're doing. Okay. Has there been anything in this journey, though, LeVar, that you have regretted? In? No, nothing. Not one thing? Not one thing. Smart people admit it. Why would he regret it? Right? He has three sons. None of them have an arrest record. All of them are... are uh, nationally known and all of them are getting full scholarships to, to a university what the hell is there to regret Admitted mistakes i think you're pretty shrewd oh, i'm a genius that's why i don't admit mistakes now come on you have it <laughs> geniuses are known for being aloof and being eccentric right most people don't understand geniuses uh they think that a genius is, is supposed to be like them well if a genius was like you then they'd be you they, then they'd be not a genius you haven't, you, you went a little no, over the top on the MJ I, comparison. I never went on the MJ, no, that's my opinion. I never went over the top, because you say I'm over the top? No. I truly believe, like I said, I can beat him in my heyday one-on-one. -on -one. Basketball's not one-on-one, -on -one, but I got enough strength and enough speed to beat him one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just going to bag you in and do a jump hook. There's nothing you can do about it. Are but you? That, but the fact that he's won championships, you put him at a different level. It's a lot of people that was like... Michael Jordan that can play as good as him, but you've never seen before. Yeah. Because let me tell you why. They in the ghetto. They don't study good. They don't get that up here. That I agree with that. But part of what makes uh, Michael Jordan or LeBron James or and uh, a Magic Johnson or Larry Bird is the focus. All right. But like he said, there's a lot of guys that could jump over cars and got 48 inch verticals and got big hands and all that other stuff. But, you know, it's like having a car with a great exterior, but it has no engine. Right. Really, what 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 difference? What good does it make? You have all the outside, but you have nothing going on inside. In, you no, know, in that skull of yours. If you don't have if you don't have much going on inside of your cranium, it doesn't make much difference how physically gifted you are. That allows them to go compete on that level because you got to have some education. I know some talented guys that jump over cars and dump. Hell, look at this cat, Gerald Green from uh, the Celtics. He might be the greatest athlete to ever play in the NBA. The guy's a bench warmer. And dump. Doing the same thing as Michael Jordan, but they got different vices, which wouldn't allow them to go through the school and say, you know what, let me go to college. Some of them try to get in there and they have all this. Yeah, that's because Jordan was fortunate enough to have a strong father figure, uh, f a father who may have been an MK Ultra handler, who knows. But, you know, that's a topic for another day. That's a topic for another video uh, dealing with the Michael Jordan thing. Have all this talent, but then they, they get veered off of doing, you know, Liking a lot of girls, hanging out, doing just bad choices. You know, the other day I was on a show, Speak for... And you see how LeVar keeps harping on the girls thing. He understands that women are a distraction. All right? The most laughable thing is this phrase, behind every great man is a great woman. Oh, that's bullshit. Behind every great man is the most high, is God. All right? Every great man. All right? Now, behind every complete man, right? Or, or on the side of every complete man, I should say is a good woman okay behind every great man is god god is either with you or he's not because i don't give a damn who gets mad lebron james had god behind him with a mother like that speak for yourself it's our afternoon show okay. jason whitlock and somebody else it could have been jason mcintyre suggested this i thought it was interesting don't know what's right but I now as this conversation is going on uh christine Leahy is stewing over there because lavar rejected her advances <laughs> Kyle is gonna front later on, like he didn't, like he didn't do what he could to, to uh, uh, try to put out that fire between them. But as you can see, he's using his conversational abilities to try to take the energy away from their their interaction. Right, but I thought it was interesting. Okay. That your son kind of released a little bit of a hip hop song. Okay. Bit. Yeah, yeah. And, he likes to rap. And yeah, and I said it probably took him an afternoon. I don't give a rip. But right. they they suggested he is trying. People see him as soft. And he's trying to get a little street appeal. Is that fair? I don't no, no, it's not fair. Why is he doing it then? He does it because he likes to do it. He likes to rap. But he don't need to be a tough guy. He's a ball player. You know, he don't need no credibility to say I'm a gangster and I do this. That's the importance of having a strong father in your life, right? Now, if, uh, if Lonzo, especially in those formative years, if he didn't have a man like this, who knows where he'd be, right? The father is the one who tells the son, son, this is why you shouldn't worry about that bullshit. This is what you have inside of you, and this is where you're going. Don't worry about all these other people. This and I do it. No, Lonzo's a ball player. He is who he is. 
And like I said, and going back to Whitlock, I don't think he can comment on anything but snacks. Now, wow. that's a little harsh. It's going to be. Now, look at how they responded to something that's, that's a joke. And the way that Whitlock talks about people, for those of you who don't know, Whitlock made a statement about uh, Lonzo Ball being a African American, meaning because uh, LeVar Ball, his dad being a so called black man, his mother being a so called white woman. Whitlock said that Lonzo Ball is a African American and that he's making a rap song because he's trying to be down. Now, that's far more of a personal attack. Than what LeVar Ball just said about him eating snacks. Like, that's lightweight shit. Don't be harsh, because he want to be harsh so on me. you disrespect Guess what? women I'm and people uh, for their no, weight? That- now, you see what she's, now, you see what she did? She took it to the feminist angle. You disrespect women. Why? Because he didn't acknowledge her. Now, what does how he treated her have to do with how he treats women? You see that? But that's the feminazi environment that has been created here in America. Where if a female doesn't get her way... She feels like she has the the ability to accuse you of being a quote unquote misogynist, which is the equivalent of being called a homophobe. All right. These are terms that are thrown at men who still have manly traits. If you don't conform to these two demographics, they've been trained to use these terms to try to embarrass you. That's what you say. I didn't say nothing about me. No, you just said that to me. Like I told I'm not even worried about you right now. Keeping your lane. Right. How could he how could he have said that to you when he hadn't said anything to you? All right. How could he have possibly said that he doesn't respect women or address people about their weight to you when he hasn't even looked at you? So clearly, like I said before, Christine Leahy has, and I'm serious about this, she has, psycho, she has a psychological disorder. All right? She has a uh, paranoid delusional disorder. And I'm dead serious about that. A lot of these liberal females are on medication. And like I said, I'm going to do a video about that. A lot of these broads are batshit crazy. Can you look like me I in the said, eye? Lock. I don't want to look you in the eye. You scare me to death. Oh. That's the one thing that I wish that he didn't say. When you when you tell somebody like that, that that they scare you, you're giving them power. Right? He shouldn't have said that. But I like the tactic that he used of ignoring her. Because the worst thing that you can do to a demonic woman, brothers, is ignore them. Believe me. All right? Females don't care about the type of energy that they get from you as long as they get it. A woman would rather you argue with her all day and night than ignore her. That shit will make her shrivel up and die. All right? And most of these women, like I said, these liberal women especially, they're out here struggling mentally every day. Every day. All right? In their purse, they got more pills than a damn pharmacy. Oh. Like I said, compliments. Thank like, you. Yes. You're scaring me right now. I don't want to look that way. But I'm talking about Whitlock is always coming with this stuff. LeVar needs to bag up. LeVar needs to do that. It quacks like a duck. It's a duck. It's a duck. See, all, all of this energy she doesn't get from her man, right? It's like a dog. You ever see these people with these dogs that, you know, they walk in the dog and the dog is barking, it's pulling the, it's pulling the leash? Why is that? Because it's not properly trained, all right? There's, there are ways to train a lot of these demonic entities. There's different tactics. Sometimes you got to spaz out on them. Sometimes you got to ignore them. You know, when I was a kid, one of my favorite shows was, was, the, uh, was Martin. And there was a great episode of Martin where, I think it was the first season, well, you know, Martin used to, he used to host a radio show. So there was an episode where Gina came on the show, no business, and the audience liked her. But her head got so big that she, now she wanted to take over his show. So Martin was like, damn, what do I do about this? He was, you know, he was, he was riffing about it with Tommy and um, Cole because he was like, damn, this is my lane. She's trying to take over my lane. So Cole said, you know what, why don't you just, you know. As soon as the show start, act like you can't talk and leave her leave her by herself. All right? She'll see that she can't carry a show by herself. The audience will hate her, and you'll get the show back. And the plan worked. All right? Basically, just ignore them. You got to ignore these demonic females, man. When you see a woman as a demon, you got to ignore her because they're looking for a way to forget how much they hate their life. All right? Christine Leahy is a super feminist because she's frustrated about her own dating history, right? Some guy hurt her bad or, or she might have been the victim of some form of sexual assault or rape. And that's normally the, the things that turn these females into mega feminists. Some guy whooped her ass or some guy uh, may have sexually assaulted her or maybe some guy hurt her emotionally back when she was younger. And she's trying to compensate for that by creating this hard shell on the outside. You see it all the time with these demonic ass liberal females. Don't come at me and don't think I'm going to come at you. You have no, uh, I mean. Exactly. If you come at the man, he, he has to come back. 
the liberal media has created this dynamic where they feel like they're the only ones that can say something about people and you can't say anything back. And if you do, it's because you're sensitive. Right. It is cathartic to uh, even the score sometime. Sometimes you got to let shit slide, but sometimes you got to let people know that. No, it's not going to go down like that. Now, we got to be even. I mean, who, where are your kids at? No, so, but listen, I, I've said... And, and there's certain things that come under me, like I said, that part right there, I'm like, okay, you negative on anything I do. And right, and that's why he was upset. He was upset because, like I said before, they're trying to come at him as a father, and especially as a so-called black man. As much as so-called black men get harassed and, and harangued about their quote-unquote failures as fathers for this man to do what he did with those three boys or what he's doing. You know? Like, come on, man. And, you know, we already know what people are going to say. He's doing what he's supposed to do. Well, you know what? You have to take that same, uh, you know, that same rationale and apply it to the women then. And stop trying to act like every Mother's Day, you know, you got to give, you know, you got you to gotta treat her like she's the Pope. All right? And Mother's Day goes back to the Mother Goddess, by the way, not to digress. But that's why, you know, People are being trained to lavish the mother with all of these gifts. Every day is supposed to be Mother's Day. All right? Meaning, what? You're supposed to honor and love your mother every day. You're not supposed to take one day and lavish her with all these fake gifts. It's nonsense. And I get it. Because you know why? He don't like trainers. You bring him to my house, I'm going to work him out. What kind of player would you suggest Lonzo will be as a rookie? Don't, let's not look into the okay. future. Okay. Just, just year. LaVar said, LaVar said, Jason Whitlock don't like trainers. He doesn't. That man is one donut away from a heart attack. Year one, what is, in your mind, LaVar, realistic? And realistically, Lonzo's going to be, here's the thing, I'll tell you before it happened. The Lakers will make the playoffs once they get Lonzo. Wow. That's what I believe, because he's a winner. He's going to get him at least that far. Wouldn't shock me. He's going to get him at least that far. He's not even worried about personal things for Lonzo. It has nothing to do with it. He knows he's going to uplift that team. Well, UCLA won 15. With your son, they won 31. Exactly. Will you acknowledge now that he carried that team? I acknowledge it from day one. I say, he's that guy you guys need. Like I said, I wanted to make... See, all this time, Colin is trying to put out the fire that was going on between LeVar and Christine Leahy. After the fact, he's going to try to act like, oh, well, I just let you guys go at it. No, you didn't. You saw what was going on. I wanted to make the staff and everybody understand that when we first came there, I, I told all the staff, we're not here to say we're going to UCLA. I need everybody to believe that we're going to win the championship. you got this guy who can win the championship, the NCAA championship for you got. He's going for that flag. And we just came up and made it to the Sweet 16. You don't at all feel vindicated today. It would be okay if you did. You're human. No, no, no. no. I'm not all the vindicated. haters. All, all the, haters. the slings. I, if, if I worry about them... I can't, here's the thing, I don't want to be going 100%. Now I'm only going 80 because I'm using 20% to go over here about the vindication of these guys. Exactly, exactly. That's why even, you know, even, when my, even with this little YouTube channel, when I got these fools making these dumbass comments, I just say thanks for watching the video. Like, motherfucker, you too damn dumb for me to take you seriously. Get the fuck out of here. Saying how good or whatever I said. Now I'm, I'm, I'm attaining to this over here. I need to be 100% going forward. I don't need no distractions 20% off to the side to say, you know what? Forget you guys. I told you I'm the man. No, I don't need that. We just got to keep forward, keep going forward and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, LeVar, initially there was a report that uh, the big dogs, um, I'm just throwing them out here, Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, I may be wrong on one of them, said, no, we're not interested. Will you pursue another meeting with those teams now that Lonzo appears to be headed to Los Angeles? Now that Lonzo's headed to Los Angeles, what they should have did is gave me a billion dollars and let me be on my way. That, that's unrealistic. They're not yeah, unrealistic to you. No, it's now a, you know what? If they want to come talk to me now, it just went up to three billion. Triple B's. <laughs> now, why did he say that for? He doesn't expect to get three billion. The reason why he said that is because he knows that. There's going to be a major windfall on his company. So he doesn't care whether he gets purchased by a, uh, an, an umbrella sports apparel corporation anymore. He doesn't give a shit. Like I said, he, did, he didn't even give a shit if, if the whole thing failed. Because if, if, if worse goes to worse, he just, goes, he just keeps doing what he's doing. They live in a nice house already. 
billion, billion, but do you, billion. But you don't believe that. No, I do believe that. That's the only way they're going to come at me. I'm already in the building. I don't need them for nothing. Well, as well, you can tell. They wouldn't want to work with you anyway because you don't respect women. You see, look, this this bitch is still mad. Look, and she like she about to cry, too. So? She's, she's after you today. Oh, I don't respect not, women, I'm but just... I'm the one that's married. I'm, I'm good. Well, she can say what she wants. You see, he hit her with that dart. He said, I, I don't respect women, but I'm the one that's married. In other words, not only do you not respect men, which is why you can't get a man. Supposedly, you're supposed to be good looking, but you can't get a man to marry you. You clearly don't even respect women because if you respected women, you would exude a lot of the traits of womanhood that would attract a man to marry you. One. She's, she's trying to put it. I never disrespect women. But I tell you what, you if, you act, if you act like... No, he disrespected a woman. You don't represent all women. Right? You don't have the you don't have the prestige to represent all women. But she's trying to u utilize that little parlay to demonize him because she can't take what he said to her. Act like that? Guess what? Something's coming to you. Oh. And it's okay. Do you do you think Are you wait, are you threatening me? Oh see how she tried Yeah, let's rewind that all the way back to get it in context. She's she's after you today. Oh, no. I don't respect women, I'm but I'm the one that's married. I'm I'm good. Well she can say what she wants. She's, she's trying to put it. I never disrespect women. But I tell you what, you if, you act, if you act like that, guess what? Something's coming to you. Now, he said, I never disrespect women. But if you act like that, something's coming back to you. In other words, when you say what you said about me and my son, I'm going to say something back to you. That was the context in what he said. Something's coming back to you. Now, look at what she this is when she goes into the nigga rape me mode. Oh, and it's OK. Do you do you think are you wait, are you threatening me? You see that? Now, what did he say about a threat? What, what did he possibly say that could be construed as a threat? See, shit like that is why the majority of females that claim that they got raped when they reported to the police, the police take it as a lie. Because so many of these females are dealing with delusional issues that they make things up in their head to justify the psychological disorder that they have. Yeah, she tried to turn the words. I wouldn't. And the skewed sense of reality. Look at this bitch. This, 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 shit, this broad is batshit crazy. I would never threaten you. You said something's coming to me. I don't know what it is. I'm not a psychic. Oh. Do you feel sometimes, though, that you live... I mean, you get in a lot of slings. The media's after you. Yes. The basketball community. Oh, he's a strong-minded so-called black man. You should be used to people coming at you. Mm -hmm. Nike says we're not interested. Right. They clearly released that. That's what Nike wanted that out. Exactly. Do you feel sometimes people are piling on you? Let me see what Colin said about Nike again. I mean, you get in a lot of slings. The media's after you. Yes. The basketball community. Mm -hmm. Nike says we're not interested. Right. They clearly released that. That's what Nike wanted that out. Exactly. You exactly. To dominate, to uh, you know, to denigrate him. You see, this is why I keep saying Colin understands him. All right. Colin and Skip understand him because they're self-made men. This is why the conversation, if it had stayed between men, it would have been peaceful. Once again, this is why a female is not supposed to be allowed to chime in between men because they bring that spirit of disorder, all right, and chaos, all right? And like I said, I'm still in the process. I'm going to make this, this video about the uh, females trying to teach the Bible. But the woman is really not supposed to be trying to chime into men's conversations, period, because they bring an element of disorder and chaos, all right? But that's why Colin has her on the show, to bring chaos, because it's good for his show. But he knows better. Do you feel sometimes people are piling on you? Is that fair? Oh, they're going to pile on. It's okay. Because everybody has a... Opinion. You don't get angry. I don't, I'm not going to get angry, no. For what? What part of the relationship... It's once not good you're, health. Once you're... You know, you're right, I don't believe in... I'm just stressing all that. That's not good Okay, finally, i gotta, I got to move on here. Okay. Um, finally, um, once the Lakers sign him, Yes. And I think he'll sign fairly quickly. That's my guess. Your son wants to play. Right, right, game. exactly. Does dad go away? How close is dad to the Lakers? Dad is never going to go away. I'm always going to be... Right, how can dad go away? Come on, dad has been there since the boy swam out of his nutsack. What's going to be his dad? Just like people say, oh, I need to fall back. I don't walk behind my son. I walk on the side of him. You see that? See, the reason, a lot of the reason why a lot of people come against LeVar Ball is because they wish that he was their daddy. So I'm always going to be on the side. LeVar Ball, I do appreciate you stopping by our show. Hey, I appreciate it, man. It's lovely. And Colin wished that LeVar was his daddy. Skip is on record as saying that he wished that LeVar was his daddy. Lovely, I like that. Nobody's ever said being with me is lovely. Hey. LeVar just needs to get rid of them two damn uh, corn-on-the-cop kernels that he got for teeth up there. Hey, nice it is, though. All right, thank you.
Thank you. Because you keep it real. I'm with you all the time. This is the hurt. <laughs> all right. All right. So now uh, it's, the, it's the aftermath of the Lavar Ball decimation of Christine. He raped me, Leahy. And we're going to see how they try to put their little spin on the incident. Well, this has been a huge big song and dance for him. And I think some people have just found it funny or like he's kind of being like a Kardashian parent. But at this point, um, after your extreme... I don't know how you could call him a Kardashian parent when he actually trained his sons to have a skill. Extremely disrespectful to women. You make fun of people for their weight and you... No, he wasn't disrespectful to women. He just addressed you for what you stated in the past. And he decided not to interact with you, which is his right. All right? If it had been a, if it had been a female who had been lambasted for her mothering skills the, the prior week and she came on the show and then she said, I'm not even going to acknowledge you because of what you said about me as a mother, you and, and everyone else in, in the liberal media would have applauded her. That's what you would have done. And in regards to Whitlock, like, I mean, that is so lame. We're going to go to the fat shaming now. Like, he's a, he's a grown man. He can handle his own business. And you call people losers who can't afford your shoes? Well, actually, you're a loser if, if you're offended by what he said about uh, you not buying his shoe because of the price. All right? That's his job to sell and market the, the product. All right? If you don't buy his shoe because it's too expensive for you, then you should be secure enough in your person and who you are to say, I don't give a damn what somebody says about me for not wanting to buy that shoe. It is what it is. I think this is a little too much now. And I, I, somehow I don't think that what you think really matters. I really did mean it as a, as a point of kind of advice. Like if you want to work with these big companies, Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, you have to market towards women. because That's Wow. I didn't know that you were uh, involved with the sports apparel industry. That you could give advice to him. I like to know who you um who you work for in the past. Isn't it amazing how people who don't own a business are always trying to tell you how to run a business? Isn't it amazing how people who don't have children are trying to tell him how to raise his children? Isn't it amazing that somebody who's not an athlete is trying to tell him how to train his sons? Wow, the world that we live in, boy. It's good to be a so-called it's good to be a uh, so-called liberal woman. You could just speak your mind on anything and have no facts have no knowledge of what you're talking about once again you know females that try to teach the bible they do it all the time females who are who try to be in positions of authority they do it all the time all right that's one of the main reasons why a lot of these men are on prescription meds because they're up under these females that are on prescription meds because they all do too and i don't know a lot of women that would wear something that's this big baller brand well, of course you wouldn't because you're a Caucasian uh, female from a, uh, most likely a, an affluent community in Chicago. Chicago, from what I understand, is a very segregated city. So I'm sure that you're not from the South Side or wherever the Negroes, the Negroes dwell, right? So, but now you feel like you can tell him who's going to wear something that has big baller brand on it. Now, what if somebody told Michael Jordan, you know, we don't see anybody wearing a, a, uh, a clothing apparel line. That has a black man doing a, a half split with a basketball over his head. Right? Nobody's wearing something until everybody's wearing it. And well, so you have to market to women. And no, you don't have to market to women. The only the only demographic that you have to market to is the young black male, as far as clothing uh, is concerned. You do not have to market to women. That's nonsense. That's her trying to push her feminist angle, and that's her once again being made to feel too comfortable around liberal blacks. Right. So-called liberal blacks, I'm sure, have welcomed her into into their circles. Right. She claims to be a hip hop fan. She has a so-called black boyfriend. That's what's happened. She's been allowed to become too comfortable. And now she's overstepped her bounds on a black on a so-called black man with a ruling class mentality. And she got put in a place. That's why he said from the start, stay in your lane. All right. I'm not none of these people here. I'm not these watered down liberal blacks that want to be your buddy. And for him to not even be able to look at me in the eye. Because you're nobody. Right. You don't look at nobody in the eye. Right. When you when you walking down the street, there's a pile of shit there. You just step over it. You don't look at it. And then to threaten me. Um, could he threatened you with what? People should save this video as an example of how delusional females can be, particularly liberal females, feminazi ones, and how they actually create these uh, these scenarios in their head in which they've been, quote unquote, threatened.
Um, could could I, I think could, could I make the he's argument? He's gonna have a, a tough time working with any. I'll give, big you, I'll give you an example. I doubt it. I I think that you'll have a tougher time working with a big company than he will. Example, and I'm not taking sides. Like Tommy John Underwear is a big sponsor of our show. Now you see, he said I'm not taking sides. In other words, he's about to um, refute her bullshit. Show, mm -hmm. and I asked him once. I'm like, my wife loves your underwear. Why don't you do a women's brand? And he goes. It's not what we're marketing to. That's a cluttered brand. We get overwhelmed. Sure. We're just aiming for guys. I think Le what LeVar Ball is saying is I'm trying to get 13 to 23-year-old men to buy my shoe. Exactly. Once again, Colin gets it, but he has to play the company line because in this society, uh, in order for him to keep his job, he has to side with the woman and with the homosexuals. All right? But he gets it perfectly. All right? 13 to 23-year-olds, preferably so-called young black males. My shoe and right, I, but he's not thinking like a good businessman because Tommy. Mm. Okay, you know what? Let, let's check your quarterly. Um, let's check your quarterly revenue in your company. Tommy John isn't trying to go into business with Hanes that makes things for men and for women. It's a big umbrella company, and what Lavar is saying isn't I want to just be my own company. He's saying I want to get paid three billion dollars. No, that's not true. What LeVar said is, if they come at me, they have to come at me with $3 billion. That's what he said. In other words, I don't give a shit if they come at me or not. Right? Like in boxing, there's such a thing as called pricing yourself out. Like oftentimes, a fighter, if he doesn't want to fight another fighter, he'll say, I need, this is how much you have to pay me to fight this guy. Knowing that for him to put forth that amount, he's not going to get the fight. For LeVar Ball to say they got to give me $3 billion, that's his way of saying, I'm not fucking with anybody else. We're keeping this in-house. But she's so stupid and she has her brain so caught up in the corporate world that she doesn't understand that he doesn't care about the corporations. He's doing his own thing. Because her whole world is dependent on what she sees on television. She has no vision. Like, she's a consumer. Right? That's why I said stop, tr stop trying to give out business advice. You're just a consumer. Right? You have no vision. You have no understanding. You have no fore foresight in regards to a business plan. All right, your business plan was giving people fellatio until you can get to where you want to get in the so-called sports media world, allegedly. By Nike, Under Armour, Adidas to be part of their brand. Well, in, in case you didn't notice, you go to their website, and I think it's mostly women who buy. Yes, and, and when those companies started out, were they marketing to women? Or did they open up a female branch because so many women want to act like and dress like men that they say, you know, let's just start a female apparel line. Who buy from those sites i don't know that, that i don't know it, it's true women athleisure is huge right now a lot of women you know they work out they want these clothes they wear adidas and nike all the time i thought that was right but when they designed those emblems and those logos for adidas and nike they didn't design them with women in mind what happened was the, the females saw how men were dressing and they wanted to mimic it that's why you see females walking around today that wear timberland boots like men or wear air jordans like men all right most of the women in America are under gender identity dis disorder. They wish that they were men. That's really what the feminist movement is all about. Women wanting to be men. I thought that was 15 minutes of just uh, bells and whistles well, and I craziness and uh, lunacy. And Listen, LeVar Ball, this is where I defend him, is I'm a dad. And I try never to tell dads how to dad. Exactly. Exactly. All right? See, this dude, Colin, he gets it, but he knows he got he to gotta walk a tightrope is that he has gone and created scholarships at one of the ucla is the only school in america that has a hundred thousand people apply to it annually and a hundred thousand and like 3200 get in and they can get in because they're great chemists or great pianists or great doctors or great basketball players or whatever and so i'm always gonna you know as a dad what he's done is remarkable and i also think college basketball unlike college football college basketball creates no stars and so lavar has gone a little over the top but in the end, there's only one player everybody wants to watch in the summer league, and that's going to be that's going to be Lonzo Ball. And that's due to Lavar's incessant and charismatic promotion of his son, right? I remember when I remember when the Lavar Ball thing first started. I, I wasn't even doing videos about him. Cats cats kept messaging me, "Yo, do a video about this guy Lavar Ball." I did a video about him, and then I saw how much hate he was getting. From a lot of dudes who don't have a ruling class mentality, they just don't get it. I ne it, it never. It never registered to me to even do anything about him because, like I said before, you know, to me, when you have a ruling class mentality, you're not offended by other people with that same mentality. Right. People who have a slave mind or a consumerist mind, 
they always going to get caught up in LeVar Ball. Now, I've said, look, I, I call a spade a spade. Do I, do I believe that LeVar Ball might have blood ties, blood gang ties? Wouldn't shock me, right, allegedly. It wouldn't shock me at all, right? Is he a, is he a, 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 a so-called Mason? Most likely he is, right? But in regards to how he uh, has raised his sons, and the things that he has done and uh, the energy that he omit, that he emits in regards to to uh, standing up for himself. I can't I can't give him number credit. Oh, so there's where I support him. I do think also he is getting so many slings and arrows. I mean, no, he, I think we just got a real glimpse into who LeVar Ball is. So he, yes, yes. A master manipulator and a great father and has you twisted around his little finger. You probably want to give him a blowjob. So you're 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 selling he, all the stock. Yeah, today kind of did it for me. I, oh wow, I, I, he's probably gonna have trouble sleeping tonight. I think before I could look at it, and I've said to you, like he is smart. He's like a Chris Kardashian. He's hyping his son up so that his family can make a lot of money. No, ma'am, he's not like a Chris Kardashian. Right? He's a he's a so-called black man in America that has taken three sons and imparted upon them a skill, and it's not even like you know he's imparted upon them a skill. And he's raising them in some rundown, dilapidated area, right? This man has put himself in a position where he actually has them in a nice, in a home, and he's given them skills, and he's tried to cement their financial future. He's not Chris Kardashian, who's a leader of a witch coven, all right? But you know, I'll probably touch on that later on. I'm a firm believer that the movie Get Out is uh, loosely based on the Kardashians and uh, a lot of the uh, psychological techniques that they use to destroy a lot of these so-called black males that get involved with them all right but that's neither here nor there we'll touch on that later honey what he just did right there was complete disrespect for so many groups of people and for a man that wants i'm, I'm still trying to figure out how does she take her, him not wanting to engage her in conversation with him attacking women and overweight people Wants to that shows you that she doesn't have the ability to deal with him one on one. What she was lusting after, she really couldn't do, which is another uh, hallmark of feminazi females. You know, their eyes are bigger than their stomachs. Wants to sell all of his products to them. He just killed his business. Yeah, because we know controversy is terrible for business. It was good stuff today. A lot of lot of stuff today. I got I got I got tough. And set an example as a father. Ser you see, she's still doing it. She can't stop it, right? She's still trying to attack him as a father. And look at Colin's face. Colin's face like, oh boy, here's bitch go again. Right? Because the only thing, the only real way that she could attack him is as a father because she can't attack him anywhere else. She knows that that's what's going to get a response and a reaction because she understands how much pride he takes as a father. Right? But now she cannot understand why he's going to attack her back. Seriously. You're going to talk like that to people and have your son and your family watching that? You're feisty. And to threaten me? You are, you are feisty. I'm you're, not feisty. I just think that that is... You're not feisty. You're just crazy. Crazy? Deranged? That is such utter disrespect for so many people. It says more about him that he can't look me in the eye. Power to next. Yeah, it's, it's, it shows you that he thinks that you're a piece of shit. Like I said, you walk down the street, there's a piece of dog shit on the pavement. You don't look at it. You, you know, you step over, you step around it. You keep it moving. All right, so now this is uh, also part of the aftermath of the LeVar Ball, Christine, he raped me, Leahy interaction. So let's see what goes on here. Uh, so I want to talk about yesterday. Yesterday, LeVar Ball came on the show. He is the father, the outrageous father, uh, outspoken father of a player I think has a chance to be a really special NBA player, Lonzo Ball, who's a very quiet kid, or at least he never talks. Uh, it was live television. And it's common for for a young man who's 19 years old to have all these cameras thrown in his face to be reticent in speaking. Like they keep trying to t create this dynamic of LeVar Ball is stopping his son from speaking. There are a lot of 19 year olds who, who might not be that forthright in front of a camera. A lot of them don't trust the media and they shouldn't. Uh, my bosses this morning said, say what you want to say about it. Uh, one of the reasons I love Fox Sports and FS1 is I'm not told what to say. I'm not directed when to talk. Uh, my takeaway is there's a bunch of stuff happening last night. I'm not going to sensationalize what happened. It was live TV. It got uncomfortable. And my uh, co-host... For, for a guy who's a trainer, his sons have terrible pull-up form. Like, come on, man. Post Christine Leahy uh, felt and was disrespected, and she went right after him. No, she wasn't disrespected at all. It's just the next day, uh, 
You guys have to create and get your narrative together about what happened. You're going to side with her because she's part of the team. And you told a line of liberalism. So it is what it is. After it. And plus, remember, Fox is uh, also on the other end of the spectrum on their news station. They've had some issues with so-called sexual harassment of women. So they have to take the woman's side. After it. Uh, and uh, that's why I did not step in. Uh, she has, I thought stepping in would have weakened her position. There was a... But you did step in. You chimed in in the middle of their altercation, their verbal altercation. You chimed in for about 10 minutes. There was a moment when I thought about it, but she kept firing back at him and defending her position, which I think she had a right to be... Uh, she had no position. The only position she had was that she wanted his attention. The way our couches are set... And she wanted to try to embarrass him about the sneaker sales, which he already, which he already answered. ...are set up. Eye contact's not always ideal, but I thought he was disrespectful. Um, also, I thought LeVar Ball, why did I bring him on the show? He had news value. Uh, he had predicted his son was going to be a Laker, and I drove in yesterday, and I'm like, oh, crap, his son's going to be a Laker. Uh, and people are mad as hell about that. People hate to see a so-called black male have aspirations and have those aspirations be fulfilled. They hate that. Uh, I put him on two previous times, and as everybody always says, why do you put him on? I've told you for 25 years, folks, you drive the bus. I put him on, we set a digital record. I put him on again, we broke that record. Yesterday, he had news value. You drive the bus. I do not get pious in this business. I think the end of broadcasters was when they think they're above guests and above topics. We create a show, which I try to make compelling every day, and you set digital records every time we have him on. And yesterday, I thought he had real, real news value. Unfortunately, it went a little sideways, or maybe fortunately, because I think this morning, what it did is unveil a side of LeVar Ball, which is more, which is closer to the truth. The and, and what truth is that, Colin? That he's not scared of, that he's not scared of handling his business with, uh, with feminazi females? That's the only truth they got revealed. There's a dark side. Uh, wow, not as not as a dark side. <laughs> you see how they you see how they try to depict strong males, particularly strong black males, right? When you stand up to a a female that attacks your your the the job that you performed as a father, now it's, you have a dark side. You think that he walked up and slapped the shit out of her, which is probably what he should have done, looking at how disrespectful she was about how he raised his sons. Uh, I thought he was a bully, um, and I think sometimes there were three things that happened yesterday after I wanted to stop the interview I got very very close if I would have stopped the interview three things would not have happened he would not have made news on the my new threshold is three billion dollars he wouldn't have said that because I would have kicked him off he would not have made and he's not being for real with that he's just saying that just to say it He's not being sincere when he says his new threshold of $3 billion. I've made news promising the Lakers will make the playoffs with Lonzo Ball. That made news on Yahoo. And he would not have unveiled more of himself with Christine, which I thought empowered Christine and showed you the truth. No, you're trying to act like it's empowering her. But, but right now, and I don't even keep up with social media, but right now she's getting slammed on most social media outlets because even people can see through the bullshit. To get to the truth, sometimes you got to go down that road that is really uncomfortable. Uh, I'm not here to... See, when people have psychological disorders, eventually they're going to come out. And like I stated in the past, I already made a video with her on a panel and I highlighted the fact. I stated explicitly that she has a psychological disorder and that she's a feminazi. I, st I stated something along those lines. All right. People are easy to read. All you got to do is watch them. I'm not here to play the interview again. In fact, I didn't play it later in the show. I didn't want to play the sensational parts. I thought he added basketball value. But that's my takeaway is sometimes we bring people on. They're interesting. I bring comedians on who, as long as they like sports. And I bring LeVar Ball on. I think he's a little bit like Don King. I think he's a little bit like the Kardashians. I think he's a little bit like Donald Trump who got into the White House. He makes news by just being himself. Uh, yesterday unveiled a lot of things and created new news and uh, that and Colin you like him you just don't want to say it you like him as a person you like him you just have to toe the line right now and you got to back up that delusional bitch that sit across from you that's kind of my takeaway this morning
for me, truthfully, I don't really want to talk about him anymore. I don't want to continue to let him be a part of my life as he has the last 24 hours. This broad is so crazy. This man don't know you from... <laughs> he, don't, he don't know you from a pile of shit. That's why he treated you like that. Because he don't care about you. You made, you made yourself part of his life when you tried to play him. He did not allow you to see people who like to try to play other people. When, when you don't allow them to play you, they get frustrated. And like I said, she got off easy for the thing that she said about him. Four hours. Right. Uh, but I think the reason that so many networks choose to have him on is because... He it's because he's uh, charismatic, he's intelligent, uh, and he's a great promoter. That's why. He's great entertainment. Because he says a lot of controversial things. He's, you know, loud and a big personality, which I've been totally fine with. Um, but I hope that yesterday showed who he is. And Yes, a, a strong-minded so-called black male. Showed it very, very proficiently. And that we stop putting him on all of these networks just to get... Wow, she said stop putting him on not just their network, but all these networks. You see, you see what they do to the so-called strong black male whenever he shows uh, a backbone? They want to blackball him. <laughs> no pun intended controversial statements out of him because that is potentially what could happen and I think there's no place for that in TV no matter what kind of ratings you're going to get. So because he didn't look at you, you're going to try to turn that into he disrespects women and there's no place in TV for that. Okay, you're mentally stable. And at this point, what I think about is I would love for Lonzo Ball to have whatever he can. I, I, I think about him. Now here comes the fake magnanimous uh sentiment oh well you know i don't just because i don't like his dad doesn't mean i i don't like lonzo bitch nobody cares who you like and don't like you're not relevant your job is to is is to put your put your mouth in front of that microphone which i'm sure you do quite often like i said that's probably how you got that job allegedly think about him in this situation i want him to do well i hope that we stop letting his father talk so much and maybe allow lonzo to talk i, I would love to hear more from him I would hope that he's successful, and I think what LeVar is doing, I don't think yesterday is going to help his son at all. If it wasn't for what LeVar was doing, his son wouldn't, wouldn't even be in the position to be where he's at. And I think that's really unfortunate for his son. What if LeVar... Yeah, because his son is such a charity case right now. He's about to get drafted number two in the draft. Yeah, he's in a real bad, he's in a real bad predicament because of his dad. If LeVar came on, look you in the eye and answer tough questions. I said yesterday, and I'll say... We already know that's not going to happen. Uh, LeVar's unrepentant, and uh, I like that about him. He's, he means what he says, and he says what he means. All right, we're not here to build bridges with demons. It is what it is. You stay on your side, I stay on my side. I'll say it again today. My issue with what happened is just a complete lack of respect. He can disagree with... Once you, once you talk about how a man is uh, oppressing his son, all bets are off. Everything I have to say and do it passionately. You and I do it all the time. We right. do it with our coworkers. But have some respect. Don't threaten me. Don't make nobody threaten you. You felt threatened by his strength. All right. What you verbalized how you really felt about his strength because you, you're not used to feeling that type of strength from a so-called black male, right? You, you're used to being accepted by these simple-ass liberal blacks. Don't make personal jokes. Don't mock me and don't say you're not going to look me in the eye. Um, if he wants to come on and look me in the eye and be respectful, he can still disagree with me. I'm, o I'm okay with that, but I will not tolerate what he did yesterday. Now, what, what is your takeaway? Um, I did not jump in. I, I did one time say, she's a reporter. She's probing. This is what reporters do. Because you were asking, actually, news. No, you were scared of LeVar, too, uh, Colin. But you tried to jump in to simmer down the convo. You jumped in for 10 minutes. I don't know why you keep bullshitting about that. But you, you were scared that he was going to jump up and smack the shit out of her. That's, that's really what it was. News question. And you was like, I'm not trying to catch that slap. Question. The question that I asked was, how many shoes did you sell? By the way, I think I, think I wanted the answer to that. Everybody wants to know the answer. <laughs> and I think the reason... He already answered. He answered blatantly. He said, he said something like four or five hundred. So I don't know why they're acting like he didn't answer. But, you know, that's normal. Uh, <laughs> that's normal caucasoid narration. The reason that he honestly got so heated is because the answer is embarrassing no there's no embarrassment to a three a three-week-old company 
right? A three-week-old company sales, there's no embarrassment behind selling 500 shoes for, for, for $500 each. Sorry. He's not doing very well. Which Actually, he's doing, I guarantee you, his business is selling better than your business because you have none. Which is fine. You know, he's, he doesn't have a lot of experience in this industry, and that's fine. And I, 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 I how much, how much experience do you have selling sneakers? Applaud him for trying to create his own business. Did I you think want that's me, great. Did you want? No, you don't. You wanted to fail so that you can, um, so that you can feel better about yourself. Like I said, the feminist female knows that she cannot ascend to the level of a real man, so she wants to see men fail to feel better about herself. Do you want me at any one point to jump in? We, by the way, we have not talked no, about this. I, I told her I didn't want to talk about this before we got on the air. Did you want me to jump in? I, I think if you would have jumped in, it would have, you know, looked like I couldn't handle myself. He did jump in. Self? That's what I thought. And I. And you couldn't handle yourself. That's why you stewed for about 10 minutes, and then you, you brought up some more bullshit. And I, I can handle myself. Um, that was exactly what I thought. I told you, I, I, did, I did tell you afterwards, I said... I thought about it for a second, and then I thought, no, you were landing. I mean, you were not backing down, so I was like... She wasn't landing anything. She was flailing and missing, and the man wouldn't even pay any, any attention. All right, it's like a grown man putting his, stretching, out his ha- stretching out his arm and putting his hand on his son's forehead while his son keeps swinging and missing because his arms are too short. I was like, good, this is the way it should be. Okay, my, my theory has always been on this, is that we should give women opportunities. When I, when I left my former employer... And I came here. I had six weeks off. I think I've told you this story. Mm-hmm. I maybe did, maybe I didn't. And I was listening to all the radio out there. It was all guys. And I thought, you know, I have finally real power in this business. And the power is going to be to change radio. Oh, Colin, stop bullshitting, man. Now, look, I, I, I just want to, uh, to cover some of the aftermath of this, of this uh, nonsensical story. This non-issue. I haven't even heard LeVar Ball comment on it since it happened. Most likely because it ain't shit to him. All right? But uh, it's something to her because this is probably the first time in a long time that a man has made her feel small. All right. She's used to leading with her looks. And from there, she can inject her vain opinion because her looks will allow people to take her seriously. All right. She's not used to a guy rejecting her. So that's damaging to her, uh, her psyche. But anyway, peace.